All right, we'll, we'll begin this event. Uh, the first thing I need to let you know, some business of the house. Uh, if you've got cell phones, silence them or put them on vibrate so we don't have that sound interference. Uh, anybody that needs to use the restroom, in the meeting room, hang a little left, right in the back. Uh, of course, exiting is not a problem. We'll have the doors wide open and you can just run. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue. Well, thank you for coming. I'm very pleased to see the, you folks here today. Uh, this is a very special time for both you folks as people of Owlsboro and for the Owlsboro Fire Department. We've got a nice little program. Uh, and I believe you will enjoy it. This event will be recorded for viewing later. And we will hopefully, the folks that are away for the winter can also see this program today. There's a lot of coincidentals on this particular time period, and we'll explain some of that later. Uh, what you've noticed when coming up to the station, the new sign on the building, uh, for many years, up on the back wall is the old original sign that my father, George Durkee, had made when he was first fire chief. A lot of those letters are made out of plywood, and I didn't even think they made plywood back then. <laughs> it's held up quite well. I've had to renew some of the letters. C couldn't seem to keep the paint on it, so it was time for a new one, so we got that done. But the letters outdoors are a little bigger. They're made out of acrylic, and they should last a long time. To start the program off, uh, we're going to do a pledge of allegiance to the flag, so please stand for that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Moment of silence for any Owlsboro fallen members as well as nationwide firefighters. Thank you, you can be seated. To start off, first guest speaker, I'll ask Pastor Trish from Second Baptist Church to do a community prayer. Good morning. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we gather as a community to dedicate this new fire truck. We are grateful to be here, for you alone have brought us through this time. And you know our journey. Dear Lord, each day we are alive is a gift. And we thank you for our lives and for all your blessings. We ask that your Holy Spirit be present as we dedicate this new truck, that all our efforts from today forward be covered by your protection, O oh God. We ask for your provision to continue, that your blessing will be on this truck, that all in need will be guided by your mighty hand. May we as a community remain unfailing in following your law of love, in service to the common good. For all who serve this fire station, may they be blessed with honor, courage, valor, and dedication to the service of this island. That this new fire truck will fulfill its purpose to save lives, 
homes and land. And in doing so, may we be led to a deeper joy. May our thoughts, our lives, and the enlargement of our souls be directed toward you, O God. Bless us with the presence of your Holy Spirit as we bring all that we are to you today. And thus we open this dedication ceremony, praying this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Pastors. I ask now that the former fire chief of Owlsboro, my father George Durkee, come up to tell about the story of going after and picking up engine four and have a lettering mistake. I don't know how long you want to be bored, but <laughs> I suppose to talk about engine four, uh, I'm going to have to back up a little bit. Uh, I became fire chief in 1958, and they had one fire engine called the Diamond T. That was a chassis. Uh, brand of it. It was a Diamond T truck and made in Middlebury, Massachusetts. And uh, it was a 500 gallon pumper and uh, probably 200 gallons of water. And I tell you, that didn't last very long if you had a fire. In fact, I already know that because I got burnt out. <laughs> uh, so we figured along in the 60s that we didn't, we're going to need another fire truck. So we negotiated to have one built, which is engine four over here. And uh, at the time, the people that we engaged to, uh, to work through was having them built in Canada. And uh, some people, they uh, made fun of that and made comments about it being built in Canada, which was okay. But they'd done some really good work up there. And uh, I had the opportunity to go up to uh, drive it back, to deliver it here to, to, to Maine. And so when we got to Pierreville, and uh, whether it was building the fire truck. We went in and it was supposed to be all completed. I looked and uh, they had put, they had painted the name on the door and left out the S. <laughs> and I said, well, that will never do. Because they were already <laughs> making fun of it anyway. If I go back to Owlsboro and it just said Owlboro on there, it ain't gonna work. So they called a guy in that does a lettering and uh, uh, I know there was an awful lot of arm waving and jibber jabbering going on because they were all French up there. <laughs> but anyway, the guy that, that I went up with, he said, let's go, let's go get supper. So while we went out, we got we went out and uh, had supper, and when we come back in, they had Owlsboro with an S on both doors. So I said, "There, yeah, that uh, that will work." But I tell you one thing: it's an 850 Ford, and back in 1969, that was a large truck. The, the cab and chassis was a, one of the larger ones. I know that I think Ford made a couple of models that was a little bigger than that, but uh, but I tell you, you're never going to wear that the cab and chassis out. It was a real good buy. 
The, the cabin chassis, and as I can remember right now, was $6,500. And to have the, it built into a fire truck, the total bill was $16,000 for a complete unit. Now you compare that to what it costs today. And we had uh, $3,000 worth of brand new equipment put on with hose and all of that. So the whole total bill for the fire truck was about $19,000. And I don't think the town ever invested in anything that lasted 52 to three years for $19,000 plus the ma annual maintenance, I think was one of the real good deals that the town done. Because it saved property here and uh, it paid for itself. But the time has come, I believe, I guess, when they're gonna retire it off and uh, and the same with anything you have. The, the, they made their own pumps and everything there, and uh, if you had any trouble right now, uh, the, the company has gone out of business, you wouldn't be able to get any parts, and uh, so therefore, there's a time has come to kind of retire it. So, I, like I say, I don't think the town has ever invested in anything and got any better deal for $19,000 that lasted for 52, 53 years. And I guess that's about all I need to say. <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better. What I'm going to explain to you, continuing, uh, what's displayed before you is the old truck and the newest truck. Some differences. This one was received in 1968. And it was, it's an 850, the biggest chassis for that style at the time. A very high-tech truck. It's a gasoline, standard steering, standard shift, means it does have a clutch. Uh, 750 gallon per minute pump, 750 gallons of water. There's not one inch of electronics on this truck. It's basically gas, wiring, battery. For whatever strange reason, it never was built with backup lights on the rear. I don't know if Canada never backs up. <laughs> but we had to add some lights on it on a switch. And when they was building and designing it, this chassis at the era that it was built used to have the gas tank behind the seat in the cab. Well, as a fire truck, we can't have that. So they took that out, built a 40-gallon tank that's down by the chassis in the body. And for more safety measures, oh, we can't have the battery in the engine compartment, so they set the batteries on top of the gas tank. So for 53, 54 years, it's never been a problem. So I think they were correct. Yes, it was built in, in uh, Canada. Uh, Tebow was a high-tech company at the time, no, long, no longer in business. They've been out of business for many years. So the truck still functions, and by the great maintenance that the department's done, and then what we've done to this truck has made it last this long, and it will keep going. What you have here today is a new Ford 
chassis 550, uh, diesel, turbocharged diesel, is power steering, and it does have an automatic transmission. It's a 10-speed transmission. It's quite new for, for chassis. It's a bigger pump. It's a midship pump. 1,250 gallons per minute, and there's reasons for that size. Um, it only carries 300 gallons of water because it's a smaller truck. But it does have foam, foam capability of a 25-gallon tank. It's got, uh, carries not all the equipment, but the, just the basic equipment. Um, it's going to be first on scene, and usually alarm calls, uh, car accidents, is, this is small enough to make it work. Uh, in the cabinet here, there's a wench that we can plug into the rear or can plug into the front to remove trees out of the road or stabilize a car that's been in an accident. This truck's also four-wheel drive, so in the muddy season that we're coming upon us, it can be easier to get into these driveways. A lot of these summer homes, for some strange reason, they don't make a straight driveway. They like to put many curves in it. Don't want to see the road, I guess. Uh, so it has a lot of potential. It, it serves as the same roles that Engine 4 will be doing. Engine 4 will be in storage for a while until we decide how to uh, contend with it. Um, the other thing I wanted to elaborate on is the numbering system of the trucks. A lot of you are not aware, but engine two number has never been used up till today. I asked my father how we arrived at the numbering system because when he picked up engine four, it already was labeled four. And some of you may not realize that the number system started by the first piece of equipment way before motorized was a small hand cart of a very small tank of water. It was a, you added soda into the water, shook up the cart, gave you pressure and shot out the water. And it might have been, I'm guessing, 100 gallons and that's all you had to work with. That was one number one piece of equipment. Number two was the Diamond T motorized vehicle, but it was never labeled number two. The Diamond T only had Isles Barrel written on the hood spelled correctly. Uh, so that was considered number two. We had, we had an old tank truck that was built in Lincolnville by Dean in Ugly. Uh That was labeled number three, and we have number four. So we kept the number system going. So off-site, we have engine five. It's a pumper tanker. We have engine six is our tank truck. And then the group decided, let's go back to number one. So we have engine one, which is the big attack truck. That's number one. So today, we have number, engine number two. So that's the history of the numbering system. And this is typical in the boating world. They name their boat special names. Uh, in fire service, usually you have an engine number. If you notice on the two ambulances, they say rescue one or rescue two. It's just a quick way to identify vehicles at a quick glance. So if you had mutual aid companies, they're gonna have a different numbering system. That's the reason for numbers. We don't give nicknames to any of these trucks other than their duty names. This is a, considered a mini pumper. So it's going to have its first response, little things. Or if we have a major fire, this won't go first on scene. It goes to the water source. That's the reason for the big pump. 
The other trucks, they have jobs, engine number, but they have attack truck or tank trucks and so on. We don't have a ladder truck, there's no room. So that's the, th the idea of the numbering system. What I ask now for our guest speaker today, Fire Chaplain Jared Blake, going to come up, he's going to explain what fire chaplains do, what they provide for departments, and he will be conducting our blessing of the truck. Good morning, and it is a pleasure to be out here on the island. I was telling the fire chief today, this is the first event I've been to where I had to take a boat. But I'm thankful to be here, and thank you, chief, for inviting me. As the chief stated, my name is Jared Blake, and I'm the fire chaplain for the town of Sabatis Fire Department, which is right outside of the city of Lewiston. I'm also the chief fire chaplain for the state of Maine, as well as the New England region director for the Federation of Fire Chaplains, which is a chaplain organization throughout the country. And I'm very humbled and honored to be with you all today for this dedication. The fire chaplains for a department may be a clergyman, a lay person, or a firefighter. In my case, I was a firefighter before I became a fire chaplain. The chaplain is one who takes on the role of providing spiritual support and other support to those in the fire service as well as those affected by an emergency crisis. Although there are many different levels of service, the chaplain normally is one who appointed by the office of the fire chief and is endorsed by their denomination authority, church or synagogue. The chaplain is to minister to the people of all religious backgrounds without preaching their own denomination. In some places, the fire chaplain is a local pastor who volunteers their time for the particular needs of the firefighters in that community. Other locations have firefighters who've been living out the call of their faith by serving as a chaplain to other firefighters in their departments. Many chaplains, like myself, are volunteers. Some get reimbursed for their expenses, expenses Others may be paid or full-time full in bigger departments. Others raise their own money, kind of like a ministry, relying on local churches and other groups to provide the funds. When firefighters respond to a burning building and focus on saving lives and properties, the fire chaplain also responds but focuses on ministering to the needs of firefighters and to the needs of fire victims. Victims of an emergency crisis may be a family who just been burned out of their homes. They may be a scared or confused spouse of a heart attack patient. They may be a mother or a father of a teenager who just committed suicide or a frightened child who has just seen their parents being transported to the hospital after a traffic accident. Firefighters are trained and are able to deal with crises in the modern world. Fire chaplains are equipped and are called to deal with people being affected by the same events. We have come here today to dedicate this new piece of apparatus to assist these firefighters. Dedication goes back to ancient times. In the Bible, 2 Chronicles 7-9 describes the dedication of the altar of Solomon's temple. In Nehemiah, gives the account of the dedication 
of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. In these dedications, building and utensils are set apart for special use by God. We've come here today to dedicate Engine 2 and its equipment and to rededicate ourselves as firefighters and emergency medical professionals. We dedicate the apparatus and all of the equipment to the glory of God and to meet the needs of our people for the town of Islesboro, spelled with an S. So I'm going to do a little bit different than what this is. I'm going to read the Psalm 121, and it is a good indication of why we're here. And it helps us to really connect to each other in those different times. Psalm 121 says, I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which makes heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. And the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, and he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy outgo uh, going out and thine coming in. From this forth and even forevermore. And that is from Psalm 121. So now let's get to blessing of the truck. And what we're going to do is we're going to have these firefighters help. So what they're doing is they're taking water from the old truck and we're going to put it in the new truck. But before the first pail of water goes in, I'm going to take some water from engine four and we're going to sprinkle some water from engine four onto engine two to, and bless it.
I pray, Lord, that you bless each and every firefighter that will be in this truck. Give them the strength and the ability to perform their job to protect lives and protect property. I pray, Lord, that, the, that you help us to get the strength that we need to perform our jobs and to save those. Lord, I pray, Lord, for the fire chief, for each and every firefighter on this department, that you keep them safe. Bless them and their families. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What we'll do now is uh, we'll get into every, and, and at the end of every year, the fire department does uh, awards to firefighters for different milestones of uh, service. Uh, I've got two to present today. Uh, we'll start with those. A certificate of appreciation for one of our new members uh, has joined on the department, currently taking a basic fire school this fall, as well as Matt Kay is also taking Firefighter 1 in Rock Rockland this winter. But uh, to Zeb Carter, certificate of appreciation for one year of service. Second award is presented to Firefighter and Safety Officer Janice Leach in grateful appreciation for your 10 years of outstanding service and dedication to the Owlsboro Fire Department. In closing, I want to thank you, the people of Owlsboro, who entrust this department to design, build, and provide equipment every year, and for your support for the capital reserve that makes this purchase possible. Uh, without the support of the community, this fire department cannot survive. Uh, we spent quite a few years in discussion of this new truck. It took a year to build it. Uh, and we believe that we have found the right match for the, the task that's come before us. Some other thank yous is the select board for their support of the department and the capital reserve program. A thank you to the other emergency services, EMS, law enforcement, health center. We all work together to meet your, to meet your needs. I'd like to thank the friends of the Owlsboro Fire Department. They're a fundraising group which supports and keeps the award program going and helps us with the time of need of any piece of equipment that's not covered in our regular town budget. 
I'd like to thank the Terry Teen Golf Club for their temporary housing of this Engine 2, and it will, for a little while, hold Engine 4. At a later time, once Lynn Scott's garage has the new building they just moved, uh, ready and service, we'll seek their services for housing for temporarily. That basically concludes this program. Uh, we're gonna have social time. There's drinks, coffee. We'll get into the cake. Uh, please come up. Look this truck over. Uh, we'll open up all the doors. Get with a firefighter, ask questions. This is just as well your truck as it is ours. But thank you for coming today.